Okay, I'm, my name is Bob, I'm part of the Royal Union Rifles uh, reenactment group. Um, we uh, portray the British Army in Germany and on Exercise Lionheart 1984. Um, kit I'm wearing is 68 pattern uh, DPM uh, smock and trousers. The, uh, the boots are the DMS boots. Maybe you can see that. Um, very, very similar, or basically the same as the old World War II boots, but with a direct moulded sole. Still with the putties to give the ankle support. Um, webbing wise, 58 pattern webbing. So we've got the two ammo pouches at the front. Respirator bag to the left. Water bottle pouch to the right. Two kidney pouches with your mess tins and, and, and uh, what not in them. Poncho roll on the bottom, NBC roll on the top. Um, first field dressing strapped onto the, uh, the yoke. Okay, so we'll start from what would be right when you're wearing it. So in this pouch, obviously magazines. In here I've got one for the section LMG and the rest are uh, for the SLR. Also carry the cleaning kit for the SLR. 58 weapon is lovely and user friendly as you can see. Yeah, I remember replacing mine with click buckles to make that easier. Move around the small pouch on the side, most important piece of equipment, knife, fork and spoon. Yeah, not originally designed for that, but I don't know a single squad who didn't do it that way. Uh, it's originally designed for the uh, Anerga grenade launcher attachment, and uh, which I don't think was put into was released into service, um, so it was a uh, blank firing attachment was kept in there, but majority of the time it was knife, fork and spoon. So you go around, 58 water bottle. And then you're coming around, basically these are your two pouches that you live out of. So gloves to keep warm, mess tins wrapped up so they don't rattle, <laughs> they're in there, got the uh, hexi burner, matches, sugar, a few bits and pieces, sponge to give it a clean down with because hexi burns and leaves black residue over everything. So in there would be a couple of pouches, a couple of ration pouches. So beans, bacon, pank, potato and, and, and pork curry on this one. And they're actually usually quite nice as well. Yeah, there was always a big trade, wasn't there, for the ones that were really good and the ones that weren't. Yeah. Uh, I can't think what it was last night that I had, but I got halfway through and just went, nope. <laughs> right, so moving around to this one. Wash roll. Which has got flannel, shaver, camouflage cream, foot powder, toothpaste, and a boot cleaning kit. So you've got spare socks and pants in a waterproof bag because 58 webbing is not at all waterproof. Um, most important bit of kit, some black nasty for tying stuff back up. And I've got a pen knife in there as well on, on a piece of string so you don't lose it. And you thought it was just kids that did that so they didn't lose their gloves. <laughs> it's 
Yeah, we used to have used to have a lieutenant colonel who actually had his gloves tied through his sleeves on on bits of uh, paracord. I've heard of that before. Yeah. So onto the resi pouch in the corner here. We've got decontamination kit. Again, lovely user-friendly 58 webbing. Coming inside, you've got the gloves, outer and inner. The uh, respirator itself, which is an S6. Um, Atropine. That's the one. Brain didn't work then. Again. So it's quite amusing that the the um, drugs companies have actually nicked that design for the an anaphylaxis uh, auto injectors. Uh, more uh, decontamination and uh, some detector paper. I've got full MBC kit if you wanted to do one at some point in. That might be a really good idea. Um, Although you, you're a brave man in this weather, with it nice and hot. Yeah, maybe first thing in the morning or. Uh, the final ammo pouch, bayonet on the side, a number three uh, magazines at the SR, and I've also got a bandolier in the bottom with some more rounds. Yeah, it was one of the things, wasn't it, with the 58, that they, they weren't designed for the SLR. Uh, with the end result is, I know people used to put f um, FFDs at the bottom to raise the height, but a bandolier makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so on the bottom, you've got your poncho roll for wet weather, and it is just a, uh, just a poncho. Uh, that was the wet weather, the standard wet weather gear for the 1980s. Um, there was some um, uh, some other wet weather gear issued, which was nicknamed Chris Packet because it rustled. Yeah, or boil in the bag with it being uh, rather warm wearing it. And then on the top, the MBC roll, which is uh, smock and trousers and boots rolled up in there as well so if there was any threat of NBC you'd already be wearing that it just lived on the top of the webbing um, when it was sort of not in use basically oh. that's it really on 58 that's really good thank you very much